Welcome to Nostalgia Hit. In today's video, we look at 20 jaw-dropping facts about the 1979 cult classic gang thriller, The Warriors. This iconic film follows the perilous journey of a charismatic gang known as The Warriors, who having found themselves wrongly accused of shooting an underworld boss, find themselves having to navigate their way through a nightmarish urban landscape, battling rival gangs and overcoming seemingly insurmountable obstacles to return to their home turf in Coney Island. Set against a dystopian, neon-lit, gritty version of New York City, the film captivated audiences with its stylized violence, memorable characters, and unique portrayal of urban decay and gang culture of the late 1970s. Here are 20 facts about the Warriors that might just blow your mind. The Warriors film is based on a novel of the same name by Saul Urich. It was rejected by 27 publishers before a shabby-looking copy with a missing cover was noticed by producer Lawrence Gordon while browsing through a discount rack in a Hollywood bookstore. Yurik's novel was in turn inspired by an ancient Greek work called Anabasis by Xenophon, which chronicles the journey of soldiers fighting their way home from enemy territory. Yurik was motivated to write The Warriors as a critique of the romanticized portrayal of street gangs, notably the 1961 musical West Side Story. He based the foundations on his experience as a New York City social investigator in the Department of Welfare during the 1950s and early 60s. Following the New York premiere, Yurik thought the film trashy and sentimentalized. His daughter Susanna offered her perspective, remarking, It's all right, Daddy. The kids will love it. And indeed, they did. The director of the film, Walter Hill, aimed to infuse it with a heightened stylized quality, reminiscent of a comic book, in contrast to the novel's grittier and more realistic tone. However, during the film's initial release in 1979, the inclusion of comic book transitions proved financially impractical. Nevertheless, these transitions were incorporated into Hill's director's cut release in 2005, a decision that proved a popular choice. Released on February 9, 1979, the film instantly sparked controversy and outrage among some critics, politicians, and community leaders, who blamed it for inciting violence and vandalism among youth. Some theaters stopped showing the film or increased security measures after reports of gang fights and riots. Other incidents of violence between rival gangs and moviegoers were also reported throughout the country. On February 12, 1979, a 19-year-old boy was fatally shot at a drive-in showing of the film in Palm Springs, California. The following night, an 18-year-old was stabbed and killed in a movie theater 175 miles away, in Oxnard. The film's original poster featured the tagline, These are the armies of the night. They are 100,000 strong. They outnumber the cops 5 to 1. They could run New York City. This was considered too provocative and misleading by some. There were calls for the wording on the poster to be changed, and even for the film to be banned. The film's opening scene, where Cyrus, the leader of the Gramercy Riffs, the most powerful gang in New York City, gives his speech to unite all the gangs of New York, was filmed at an abandoned amphitheater in Van Cortlandt Park in the Bronx. The scene involved over 1,000 extras, many of whom were real gang members who had to be paid in cash and kept separate from each other to avoid conflicts. Cyrus was played by Roger Hill. The role was originally cast to a real-life gang member, but he suddenly vanished the night before filming commenced, and Hill was cast due to his charismatic presence and powerful voice. The speech is still considered to this day as one of the most memorable in movie history. Cleon was the leader of the Warriors until he was killed by the Gramercy Riffs shortly after Cyrus's assassination. He was played by Dorsey Wright, who was a dancer and choreographer before becoming an actor. That same year, he co-starred in the film version of the Broadway musical Hair, where he played the role of HUD. Director Hill had handpicked Michael Beck, 
the actor cast to play the gang's de facto leader, Swan, after seeing him perform alongside Sigourney Weaver in a small Israeli film called Madman. A year after The Warriors, Beck would star in the 1980 fantasy musical film, Xanadu. Afterward, Beck said he considered Xanadu to be a career killer. Vermin was supposed to be killed by the Lizzies, an all-female gang that lured him, Cochise, and Rembrandt into their apartment. However, Mikos made his character so likable and memorable that the death scene was removed from the script. The role of Vermin was initially offered to future Who's the Boss star, Tony Danza, but at the time he was starring in the sitcom Taxi and was committed to the show. Deborah Van Valkenburg played Mercy, a member of the Orphans, a low-ranking gang that clashed with the Warriors. She later joined the Warriors and became Swan's love interest. During the film, Valkenburg is wearing a pink leotard and floral skirt. Later in the film, she adds a long-sleeved denim shirt that she claims she stole. In reality, Valkenburg broke her wrist during shooting, and the shirt was worn to cover up her cast. Cyrus was killed by Luther, the leader of the Rogues, who was played by David Patrick Kelly. Kelly improvised Luther's signature taunt, Warriors, come out to play, which he based on an intimidating neighbor of his. The taunt became one of the most iconic lines in the film, and in movie history. The Baseball Furies were one of the most memorable gangs in the film. They wore baseball uniforms and face paint, and wielded baseball bats as weapons. They were created by Walter Hill as an homage to his favorite band, Kiss, and his love of baseball. During the fight between Swan and one of the Baseball Furies, Swan accidentally hit the Fury so hard with his bat that he broke three of his ribs. The Fury's reaction of pain was real, but he continued to act until the scene was over. Beck did not find out about the injury until 37 years later, during a reunion event. The Warriors was parodied in a 2014 episode of the animated series, The Simpsons, called The Winter of His Content. The vest that Warriors gang members wore has since become iconic and fetched thousands of dollars whenever one shows up at auction. Bought in bulk from a label called East Gate, they were embroidered with the gang name and a skull with wings insignia. Unfortunately, most of the vests do not have the original insignia patches on the back. In true old Hollywood fashion, once filming finished, the vests were put back into Paramount's costume inventory to be reused in other productions, prompting the removal of the patches. Tom Hanks actually wore one of the recycled vests in a 1982 episode of Taxi. President Ronald Reagan's press secretary, called up Michael Beck to tell him that the president was a fan and enjoyed watching the film while he was at Camp David. Thomas Waits, who played Fox, fell out with director Hill while filming and threatened to report the production to the Screen Actors Guild. As tensions grew deeper between the two, Hill had enough and had Waits' character killed off. He was replaced by a body double who was tossed onto the train tracks. This becomes obvious when watching the film, as when he runs in front of the camera, you can see him trying to hide his face. Due to Waits' feud with Hill and in the heat of the moment, Waits asked to remove his name from the credits and remains uncredited to this day. Waits later stated that this was one of the dumbest mistakes he's ever made in his career. He has since mended his relationship with Hill, and today, he only blames himself for the rift that developed between them. The making of The Warriors was sometimes chaotic and terrifying. Director Hill and Frank Marshall, the film's executive producer, had badly miscalculated just how difficult it would be to shoot on location in New York City and in the middle of the night. The film needed to take place in total darkness, and a normal day of shooting shrank to just a few shadowy hours in the early, pre-dawn morning. The picture quickly fell behind schedule and ran increasingly over budget. Run-ins with real gang members and hostile residents often threatened to derail the production even further. Once, while filming below an elevated subway track one night, Hill says a local gang began urinating on the actors from above. 
According to Beck, another shoot had to be called off after dozens of kids swarmed the block's abandoned buildings, jeering the warriors incessantly from the normally vacant windows. 1979 was the year of the gang movies, with five hitting theaters that year. The race was on to see who'd be first to hit the silver screen, with the Warriors winning out. The other films included The Wanderers, Walk Proud, Over the Edge, and Boulevard Nights. Of the five gang films, it's the Warriors in particular, but also the Wanderers that have endured and stood the test of time. Conrad Sheehan and Jerry Hewitt starred in both the big gang thrillers of 1979. Sheehan, who played the roller skating leader of the punks, also starred in The Wanderers, where he played the Ducky Boys second in command. Hewitt, the leader of the Baseball Furies, also starred in The Wanderers, where he played a professional bowler who was part of a hustling gang. The Warriors has left an indelible mark on contemporary culture. Its gritty portrayal of urban life, gang warfare, and the quest for survival has influenced countless films, television shows, video games, and even fashion. The film's iconic gang aesthetics, from the Warriors' vests to the Baseball Furies' costumes, continue to inspire subcultures and artists. Its themes of unity and identity resonate in today's world, and its enduring popularity testifies to its cultural significance, firmly establishing the Warriors as a timeless cult classic that continues to captivate and influence audiences decades after its release. Who was your favorite character and what was your favorite moment from the film? Let us know in the comments below. Why not watch The Warriors or The Wanderers cast then and now? They are listed on the screen. Thanks for watching Nostalgia Hit. Please remember to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, as it really helps the channel. Until next time.